So here's the box. Classic Garmin packaging, grey box, photograph of the main article on the front. There's a small amount of information on the box, but a majority of it is regulatory information and reminders not to eat coin cells, no matter how delicious they might be. Let's open it up and see what we get. The chest strap. I opted for the medium to extra large version. Not sure what you do if you're extra extra large. Maybe you don't need one of these. The heart rate sensor itself seems to be similar to the, the original, or let's say the, yeah, the first Garmin HRM heart rate sensor. And a quick start manual. And finally, more regulatory information and reminders not to eat coin cells. Next, we can take a bit more of a detailed look at the two main components that make up the Garmin HRM200. Firstly, we have this chest strap. This is a nice elasticated piece of material, very high quality feeling, much less plasticky than the, the first HRM that I owned and also recently lost, hence the need to purchase this one. If you have not used one of these before, the clue is in the name. It goes around your chest, just below your sternum. On the back side, we have these four uh, quite important areas. This is, uh, these are the electrodes which capture, there we go, we can see a bit better now. We can, these capture the, the electrical signals from your body, which essentially tell your heart to beat. Garmin recommends that these electrodes ideally need to be wet with some water uh, before you put the strap on. This helps with conductivity between the strap and your body. Normally I use a, a water-based jelly, which is used in hospitals for, for ultrasounds. So if you've ever been for a scan um, of a muscle or to see a baby, um, yeah, this is the jelly that they're using. It's a conductive water-based jelly. And uh, this is typically, I use this more on, on colder days because uh, yeah, you're not sweating or I'm not sweating so much. Next, we'll quickly move on to the pod. So this is the business end of the unit, I would say. Um, inside here, we have some electronics and, and some software installed on those electronics, which capture the signals uh, transmitted by the strap. And long story short, they filter out noise from other bodily functions, such as muscle contractions, or also electronic devices, uh, filters this out, calculates your heart rate, and then of course transmits this data to your cycling computer, smartwatch, phone, or whatever you're using, as this device does not have the ability to record data. It's purely a capture, process, transmit unit. The pod has the means to connect to your devices by either Ant Plus or Bluetooth. The connection can also be optionally encrypted due to some genius legislation probably coming out of the EU. I honestly don't know anyone that would want to encrypt this data other than perhaps elite athletes that don't want their competition knowing how hard they're pushing. However, I'm pretty sure this could be done by other means if desired. I'm not gonna film myself connecting it to my devices because Garmin isn't a startup and I'm pretty sure that works fine. I have plenty, to, plenty of devices from them. I'm also not going to talk about accuracy because that testing has been done already and you can easily find that on YouTube. And yeah, uh, we can just quickly install the, the pod onto the strap by these two poppers. Press the button. It's awake. Green light means I'm awake, I'm transmitting. And that's more or less it for my first ever review. I hope it was insightful for you. And if you have the energy to click your mouse or tap on your fingers, tap with your fingers twice, it would be much appreciated to click once on the like button and once on the subscribe button for this video and I'll be making many more in the future. That's all for now. Bye.